don't you act growing up? ashamed of yourselves. Why don't you act like grown-ups? And you too. Quiet. All of you. Stop where you are. There, that's better. Of course, if you'd rather not listen, go ahead. Just step on the gas. Take off. Let's... You can't go forward. So why not go back for a moment? Let's see how you got into this mess in the first place. Come on, all of you, back. I mean, all the way back. If we want to get to the bottom of things, we've got to go back to the beginning. Of course, there were no traffic problems. But in time, there were plenty of others. Clearing forests. Building the first houses near a crossroad. Then the church and the mill. These were gradually connected by footpaths and horse trails. As the settlement grew into a village, paths became roads for wagons and carriages. As commerce and industry thrived, the people sought out easier and faster ways of moving about. But as the city continued to transportation was stirring the imagination of the daring few who could afford it. So, but the automobile just got better and better. Pretty soon it wasn't just luxury or a convenience. It became part of the American standard of living. Imagine what this country would be like without automobiles. It would be impossible to live in many parts of the country without them. For business or for travel, for recreation or vacation. There's nothing like a car. Fifty million Americans can't be wrong, but millions of cars take up a lot of room, especially when too many of them are in the same place at the same time. Traffic congestion gets worse and worse, because more and more is while we go about our daily work. Take this modern office building. If all the people in the building drove their cars to work, the parking area required would be greater than the floor space of the building itself. City planners and traffic engineers have been trying valiantly to make more space available for traffic handling. But the increasing number of cars requires wider streets and more off-street parking lots. In many cases, valuable land must be sacrificed to the traffic monster. But these changes only bring more cars into already overcrowded downtown streets, and the traffic situation becomes more acute and aggravating than it ever was before. We widen our streets and invite more traffic. More freeways, more cars. And so the cycle goes.
For all the time and money spent, what will it bring us in the city? Speed? Convenience? Safety? Pleasure? We've been trying to move traffic when the basic intent is to move people. It's the objective in every community to move people to factories and offices, to church, to schools, to a playground, and home again. This growing number of people must by some practical means into the area where they work, shop, and play. Most cars carry only one or two people. Within this block, 50 people in 40 cars. No wonder we have traffic congestion. Now, here's a practical approach, public transit. Let's see how it helps solve our problem. A motor bus can carry as many people as all the cars that can be jammed into a city block. One trolley coach provides enough transportation per trip to eliminate the need for as many as 50 parking spaces in a downtown area. A modern streetcar, with its large carrying capacity, handles enough traffic each day to remove hundreds of cars from heavily congested downtown areas. A four-track system of this type can carry 100,000 people per hour in each direction. To do the same job with automobiles would require more than 100 lanes of highway over a half mile wide and costing many times more than the entire rapid transit system. 50 lanes of carrying capacity can be added to a freeway by building a two-track rapid transit line down the center. Let's take a closer look at our transit system. So far as most of us are concerned, Public transit is dropping a token into a fare box. These tokens all add up to one thing. A faster, safer, more dependable ride for you. Where do you live? Where do you want to go? What time? How many of you at a time? These questions have all been studied by your transit company. Your arrival at work must be timed. Vehicles must be made available for rush period. You are able to transfer to other points, wherever transfer. The train operator must carefully study each type of vehicle and use it where it will best serve you. Whether you live in the suburbs, on the main thoroughfares, or in... Trains running over private right-of-ways proved to be the most practical way to handle large numbers of people in the large cities. Your day levels are made possible by trained, skilled people to ensure high standards of performance. High standards for equipment, too, must be upheld. Regular inspections and maintenance go on daily because the safety and convenience of thousands of people are concerned. <laughs> On rapid transit lines, block signals control the safe movement of many trains. The location and movements of each train are controlled through the dispatcher's board. All these devices are placed in the hands of competent, alert operators is to serve you, the passenger, with safe, dependable vehicles.
public transit in action. A logical solution to traffic congestion. We've come a long way in the last 50 years, and we pride ourselves on our accomplishments. Some car, some pickup. Man, <laughs> this is really living. We've been trying to move traffic when the basic intent is to move people. We must move people or our cities will be strangled. To move people, cities must take drastic action. Establish a system of arterial and local streets. Control traffic lighting that speeds the flow to work and Enforce driving and parking restrictions in heavily traveled streets. Ban parking on main streets during rush hours. Restrict turns at busy intersections. And some cities may have to reserve streets, or at least traffic lanes, for transit vehicles alone. Because one person in one car can delay hundreds of people in the transit system may have to accept deliveries at off and you must give the transit system a fair rate and tax legislation. Then with new trails enforced, surface transit can give service of rapid transit. It will be even more convenient and practical to park your car outside the downtown area. On the outskirts there is and your transit system will then get you to work calmly and in half the time. You will be six times more dangerous than the transit ride. You will be able to ride to the corner near insurance rates will be reduced. Valuable property will be saved for business and industry. And because of reduced congestion, speed the flow of the majority who already ride the... If you're sick of fighting traffic now, what do you think it might be? What do you want? Your town strangled by traffic congestion? Continual destruction of valuable property? Or is your town going places, building a sound urban transit system that will speed the travel of people today or city grow tomorrow? Stop thinking in terms of moving vehicles, people, and your town will be going places.